Hi everybody, it's Colleen again. Welcome back. And I am just now getting a look at myself in this sweater. <laughs> I can't decide if I'm trying to be an anime character or if I'm trying to command a starship. What a hoot. I have never seen me in this before. <laughs> it's hilarious. I kind of like it. Okay. Um, anyway, we're back and we're going to have a little fun today because I'm going to show you some stuff from my super cool art supply collection. Like you know, people collect art supplies. I mean, we're going to have a hobby. And mine is, um, well, I have a lot of them, but one of the things I love to do is to get cool things from the studios of artists I really love and admire. And I'm very lucky to have things from a number of uh, cartoonists. I've been super uh, blessed to be good friends with some of these people. And in some cases, uh, just be trusted enough by them to carry on and and keep their stuff and it makes me very happy to be able to share some of this with you today. I have in my hot little hands right here a bag full of goodies from Marie Severin and uh, oh my gosh there's so much stuff in here. Uh, this is Marie Severin's <laughs> employee stamp from when she was the staff artist of Utility Spotlight. Look at this ancient thing. It's got uh, it's got the address on here. You can see on the back. I don't even know if people really use this much, this this kind of stuff anymore. But uh, that's kind of a neat thing to have. I like to hang on to that. It just you know makes me happy. It's Marie. Uh, Marie was quite a pistol. She was a real tough cookie. I mean, you know, especially when she passed away. She go, oh, she was so sweet. She was so nice. It's like she was a barracuda. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying that she was really, really tough and really dedicated to her work. And she didn't take any gift from anybody. She was she was a hard nose. So, you know, oh, she was so sweet. She was, she was the shit. <laughs> Can I say that? Well, too late. I've already said it. I hope I don't get censored or something. But Marie was Marie was quite a quite a tough cookie. And um she she really uh had a bit of a hoarder habit, I'm afraid. So, um, probably made her life difficult, but it made it really cool for me when I got a lot of her stuff. Look at this ancient box of pencils. I don't even want to throw this away. This is so cool. And she never even used some of this stuff. Look at that. Venus Pencils. Venus Pen and Pencil Company. That is a hoot. And this is even more ancient. Kohinoor graphic leads. I don't even know how old this box is. Look at that thing. That cracks me up. I, I kind of wish, you know, some museum or something would take it. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe nobody's really interested in this kind of thing. I remember trying to get a museum to take some of this stuff earlier, and they, they just didn't want it. It kind of broke my heart a little bit, but um, I just think it's cool to have it. I have been giving some of it away to some of her friends uh, when they wanted, well, you know, Memento Marie. Uh, I, I passed along some of her art supplies to some other folks because I just didn't want them to get thrown away. This is, a, oh my God, from the Craft Students League at the YWCA, Marie Severin, she bought leather for five bucks. And it's dated, I believe, 1959. And she, she saved this receipt. And now I'm saving this receipt. I, I don't know. I probably shouldn't talk about anybody else being a hoarder. I'm totally not a hoarder, I swear to God. But uh, I, I did have so much stuff from people at one point. I, I really had to really had to tone it down and get rid of it. But uh, some of this stuff is just so cool. And the packaging is cool. Do they, do they even make these kinds of packages anymore? That's kind of neat. I like that. I, I probably have 20 or 30 of these. Turquoise, turquoise eagle drawing lids. Very cool. But this one over here, I really love having this. This is from John Romita. And you know how I know it's from John Romita? Because he signed it. This, <laughs> this is a mini light box. You would use something like this to look at slides or negatives. Uh, again, does anybody even use this sort of thing anymore? Well, heck. I have one, and it's signed by John Romita. It's his very own personal copy. This makes me happy. I'm keeping it. I'll probably never use it as long as I live, but I'm keeping it. It's from John Romita. It's beautiful. <laughs> but this cracks me up. I really love having this. Where do you see this? 
This is a bag of Marie Severin's Dr. Martin's watercolors. She would have used these to color all of those comics over the years. And many of these bottles are like three quarters full or half full. And they've been sitting here wrapped in ancient newspaper. Oh my gosh, what is the date on this? 1971. <laughs> it's been wrapped up since 1971. And you can still use this stuff. I wouldn't because Dr. Martin's, uh, the old formulation of Dr. Martin's watercolors anyway, are notoriously fugitive. Uh, if you put this stuff out in the light for even a few weeks, you'll notice fading. But uh, this is how comics were covered, colored back in the day. You would you would use these little bottles of stuff, and uh, oddly, the actual work by the colorists rarely made it into the final product. What you you saw was the hand separated work based on a color key by a colorist like Marie Severin kind of a complicated explanation, but you never saw Marie's work. You saw a color separator's interpretation of Marie's work. She would put down the color with a handwritten color code, and then way over in New Jersey somewhere, some poor lady was sitting there hand cutting out pieces of acetate to indicate the areas of, of color separation, and that's what they used to do, the original color, Marie's color models. Now, she, she, uh, she passed on about, I don't know, 50 of these to me. I've given away a lot of them. I've given away most of these to other artists. I gave some of them away on my Patreon. And by the way, I have about, I don't know, a dozen or more bottles that I can give away. And if you're on my Patreon, sing out. Say, I'd love to have one of Marie Severin's bottles as a memento Marie. And I'd love to pass it along to you. So leave a note. On the Patreon page and say I'd like to have one of those and I'll be sure to get you one of these bottles if you're one of the first dozen people to write in and uh, I'd, I'd love to share one of these with you but one of the things that makes me so happy that <laughs> the reason I saved this particular bag just as it was is because of what it says on the newspaper over here the line is I'm ashamed to say I was a prostitute <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was wrapped up in this and it just cracked me up. It's like, oh my God, I have to keep that. <laughs> it's the little things. <laughs> it makes me stupid, isn't it? Crack me up. So that's why I'm keeping this entire bag of Dr. Martin's watercolors. But I do have some more in the other room. So if you would like one of these bottles, and most of them are empty. Too bad for you. Uh, I, I ended up giving large bottles. She had huge bottles like this of the stuff. I ended up giving them to a school. But I do have a, a number of mostly empty bottles. So, you know, you want a memento, ask for it. I'll send it along to you. They're kind of neat to have. And, and uh, I, I often use them to uh, put flowers in. I mean, why not? It's fun. Nice to have a little, little something from Marie Severin. Yay! It's pretty cool. Okay, what else have we got here to talk about today? Oh yeah, I was talking about transparencies the other day, and I couldn't believe I found this. This is the transparency to the cover of oh, 1980. I think it was 1987. I don't even remember. Gosh, old. Uh, edition of A Distant Soil, and you're looking at uh, how we would get the art shot for reproduction um, by a photographer. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to do this on a lot of my stuff because back then I was, you know, broke, starving artist, and uh, getting stuff shot by a photographer was, was pretty expensive, it often cost more than the original art was worth. But this is how it was done and before computers. <laughs> thank God for computers. Oh, thank God for computers. Um, but mm, these these could get really expensive. They, I'd, I'd have, you know, photographers charge me a couple hundred bucks a piece. And I might not get a couple hundred bucks for, for the cover art. So it's very sad. But if you want to see what one of them looks like, that's it. I do have a scanner that can uh, shoot these properly. And... 
and I can get use out of these ancient transparencies, assuming they're not scratched up as well. The great hazards of working this way. You, you had to be so careful with your negatives and your transparencies because, you know, one little scratch and it was all over the printed version. And speaking of negatives, we lost most of our negatives uh, to an unscrupulous printer, but I do have a few. And this is from issue 31. So this is what a comic book negative looks like. Now, I'm sure that most people think negatives are tiny little things that you remember seeing from uh, from your camera, if you indeed have cameras that use negatives anymore. But the negatives on a comic book would have been the original size of the printed art. And uh, if if I run that through the scanner back there, it will it will reproduce. Now, the funny thing about these negatives is we thought they were good at the time, but now that we're getting the work digitally restored, um, the digital restoration is so much better than the original negatives ever were. So even though it's costing a fortune and taking forever, uh, in the end it makes the art look better. But uh, these have been cut down. Now, normally when the negatives would be, would be shot, they would be on four feet by four feet uh, flats and I have a bunch of those out in storage from other projects but uh, I think out of the whole series you know, that get, you know I don't know maybe six or seven issues of the book but all of the really early stuff was destroyed which was especially annoying because I had that shot in another printer and I had, I had paid to get all that stuff back and my my new printer destroyed it so thank you very much Cabacola Belfort mm. But those are what negatives looked like, and uh, they're actually kind of heavy, uh, and they're pretty pricey. A lot of the expense of, of a comic book would be in getting these negatives made. Oy, very nice. And something else we talked about on the Patreon the other day, and let me see if I can dig it up out of my bag of tricks over here. <laughs> we talked about blue line color. And it's a little hard to get through to people unless they've actually seen it. Now, blue line color was how artists got painterly color, but with a, a clean black line over it. And I have some blue line. Oh, wrong page. Where is it? It's over here. Ah, here it is. Sorry. Uh, okay. If you wanted to get painterly color look, but you wanted clean black line, this is the way it was done. Now, nowadays you do this on a computer, but we didn't have that back then, but we had this. What you would do is one sheet would be printed with this color blue, and all of the black lines in blue would be invisible to the printer's camera because you don't want this stuff to show. The, 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 the camera cannot see this, so it just blanks out. You've got a separate sheet on which the black lines are printed, and you would hand paint all of your colors on this. This looks really goopy and awful, but when it's combined, it actually looks pretty cool. And uh, I actually think this is easier than most digital color. You don't have to do flats. You get that painted look in minutes. I mean, I might do a whole page in about an hour and uh, all of your mistakes disappear under the black. Uh, the only problem was getting this, this uh, color segment and the black plate to line up because the color would warp a little bit. The watercolor would bend and warp this paper a little bit, so it made it tricky getting every single line of this black to line up properly because the sizes would be slightly different when the two images were combined. But this is from Clive Barker's Hellraiser. I can't even remember when I did this. No, that's not true. I believe this was 1991. And uh, I really loved working this way, and if I could get more of my uh, publishers to let me work this way in the future, I'd, I'd totally go for it. It's it's much easier than 
the digital color. You just pick up a brush and go. You're not sitting there preparing files and and you know picking a palette. I'm just like, well, here's paint. Yeah. I I do these pretty quick. So this is what we were talking about the other day. Blue line color. Yay! I can't believe I had this. This I I this should have an acetate sheet to go over it. It's black, so you could just flip it down and see how it was going to look in the final. I don't know where that is. That's been you know, probably tore or something at some point, which is why I don't have it. But but Clyde Marcus Hellraiser, eh, in 291. You can still find this in print. Somebody bought the rights to this a while back. So around oh. Oh, around two years ago, there was a new edition. I haven't seen it. They, <laughs> they don't send us stuff. Whatever. That's work for hire for you. Anyway, so that's some cool stuff that we're, we're talking about on our Patreon, and I have to be able to show you this. Yay! And I hope everybody is doing well. I know that... Uh, you know, stuff is kind of nervy and creepy and, and horrible, but uh, I hope you're staying in good spirits. And and we've got some fun stuff going on at the Patreon. We've got some art supply giveaways. I'm giving away a set of uh, Daniel Smith essential watercolors, but I am going to be giving away more paints and some pens and some other cool art supply stuff. And we've got some autographed books from novelist Barry Liga, who has kindly donated some cool things to the Patreon as well. So if you're a Patreon supporter, we've got some other nice stuff coming up. And please be sure to send me more of your questions. I'll be happy to answer them in the next video. And I think we've about run out of time for today. But there are two things coming up. Uh, I, I'm finally getting to the Troll Bridge academic lecture that I've given at uh, uh, Comics Masterclass and places like Manhattanville College. This will be an exclusive for my patrons, so uh, I'm hoping to have that uploaded this weekend. It's a pretty long lecture. It's, I think it's over an hour, um, so that'll be up in a couple of days. And uh, something else, I don't know. Can't do it. Oh yeah, the Cartoon Art Museum has postponed their uh, auctions of the Calvin and Hobbes art to benefit the museum. As soon as I know more, uh, the art that I showed the other day will be up for auction and you'll be able to bid on it. So um, as soon as I know more, yay! And one more thing, well maybe two more things. Uh, the Weirdathon at Patreon uh, ran the other day. You can see the entire event. I will post a link at the bottom of this and if you would like to donate to their uh, fund which will go to help artists who've lost gigs and whatnot. I am not one of the artists looking for uh, a grant. I, I'm doing fine on my Patreon with my current assignments so please um, uh, do donate to others if you uh, if you have the ability, that would be just wonderful. I know that with everything that's coming up, I'm probably going to lose some Patreon support, but your support is valuable. Your moral support is valuable. Your kindness has been much appreciated. Everything that you've done for me already. So please do not feel like uh, you need to apologize if you're and your support. I've had a couple of people write me and I'm like, Please don't apologize. I, I totally get it. I appreciate every single kindness that you've sent my way. It's been absolutely lovely. Thank you so, 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 so much. And um, I'm I'm just going to burr down and, and get work done. I've got a couple of assignments. I have lost a few assignments. Uh, one assignment has been postponed to next year, and two things have been canceled. Uh, Finality that I was doing with Warren Ellis, uh, unfortunately, it's been canceled. It's entirely my fault. I keep pushing it back and pushing it back, and and now we just can't go forward with it. Um, I'd hoped to be able to squeeze it in about four or five months ago, and I just couldn't get back to it. And they were like, you know, we need to pull the plug on this. So that's on me, not on Warren. So please don't hold him responsible for that. That's totally my bad this time. But I do have other work, even though I've had several assignments get canceled or pushed back. Um, but uh, I'm not entirely sorry because I was a little overbooked and I was starting to worry. Um, I won't be going to Greece. I won't be going to Australia, uh, which again, just as well, I have 
quite a lot on my plate, quite a lot to do. And with the extra time, I hope to go ahead and catch back up on all those commissions I've been running really far behind on. Ugh, ugh, boy. Uh, I won't be accepting any more commissions until those are done. I just can't do it. So uh, I'm often asked how to commission something. Don't ask right now. I just, no, I can't do it. But I will be posting some live draws and uh, um, some more art demos. I wish I could do more in-depth demos, but I don't really have the camera set up to do that kind of thing. So uh, it, I think we're going to stick with the chat and draws. Yay! I hope you enjoy them. I, I spent the last few days really cleaning up around here. I went on an absolutely massive binge, and I did find a lot of a lot of a lot more fun stuff. But like I said, I don't want these videos to get too long. But I appreciate you guys popping in. I hope you enjoyed the little look at some of the fun things I've got stuck around the office. And uh, I will be getting the Trollbridge lecture up in a couple of days. And thanks for tuning in again. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks. Bye.